Greetings everyone! This is Sara and today I want to show you how to read an ephemeris. It's important to know how to read an ephemeris because it will show you what the sun and the moon and the planets are doing each and every day. It'll show you each and every day what the constellations, what the zodiac constellations are in every day. So right here we have what is known as an ephemeris. And I got this book, or I mean, I got this, this ephemeris from this calendar, We Moon. And you may, it's just a Xeroxed so that we can see it a little bit better. It's a Xerox enlarged copy, but it came from the We Moon calendar. And you may have noticed that sometimes your calendars come with tables like this. This calendar comes with one as well. And here's a calendar that will have them. So if you ever saw them and were wondering what they were for and how to read them, that's why I'm here. So they're very easy to read. One thing that will maybe hold you back if you don't is that you've got to understand your symbols. You got to know your symbols, at least for a quick reference. Like you can always go online and or anywhere else that might show you the symbols. It's very easy to do. But if you're trying to look up things quickly, it's helpful that you know your symbols because it doesn't it doesn't write them out for you right here. See, it said, this is the sun symbol right here, and it doesn't say the sun. So it's just helpful to know your symbols. So we have, um, I'll just show you really quickly. This is a symbol for the sun. This, all these right here will be the planets. This is a symbol for the moon, and it, show, it says zero hour. So this is at midnight, and then it says moon noon. And I think that the just show you midnight and noon because the moon travels really fast so it can show you the difference between those times in case you need to know that right here this is not a planet but they're showing us this because it is an important point to people who study astrology it's called the north node or the rahu or rahu and it has to do with where the sun and moon meet on the ecliptic in relation to the earth and form eclipses. This is Mercury right here, Venus, Mars, and for some reason they put an asteroid in here. I'm not sh why sh quite sure why they would put this one because there's a lot of asteroids, but this I believe is the asteroid Cirrus. I'm not a big asteroid person, although I do think there's a lot to them. But yes, they have this asteroid here. And then we've got Jupiter, Saturn, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So those are our planets all along here. Now we've got the month, January 2022. So this represents what the, all the planets are doing in January 2022. So we see right here, it says day. And we see the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it just goes on. So this is the 1st of January. This is the 2nd of January. This is the 3rd of January, and so on. So let's say we want to know what Mercury was doing. What, what, where was the planet Mercury in the, the sky and the... Um, January 1st, 2022, how do we start it off? So we go over to Mercury right here. Mercury. We go over to the 1st, we see, January 2022, the 1st. And if we go, we can see that this is the first day excuse me, right here where Mercury is. And we see that the first day of January, Mercury was in Capricorn because right here, 
This is the symbol for Capricorn. So we need to know our planet symbols and we need to know our zodiac symbols. So this is the symbol for Capricorn. And right here we have the number 28. So what this means is 28 degrees Capricorn that we started the first day of January. 28 degrees Capricorn. There's some numbers right here. There's a 10 and there's a 9. So technically it's 28 degrees Capricorn. 10 minutes and 9 seconds. So this we don't really we don't need to really bother with these numbers on on this side. It's just good to know that it's 28 degrees Capricorn. Right here these numbers. And then like right here you see that number but not these numbers. And maybe that number 28 doesn't mean anything to you, but it's still, you can still just look up like, oh, I want to know how we start off the first of the year. We've got Mercury. We've got Capricorn. So we know we start off the, the first of the year, the very first day in Capricorn. But it, look, if you go down, all of a sudden we see this symbol which represents Aquarius. And you, like you, I, like I said, you can see how knowing the symbols is important. So if you're interested in learning, I trust you will memorize them on your own. So we have the symbol Aquarius. So we know that we start off in Capricorn on January 1st, 2022. But just a couple days later, we can go over here, the 3rd. We can see that Mercury goes into Aquar Aquarius on the 3rd third of January. Right? Let's look and see what Venus is doing on how we start off the year of January 2022 with Venus. We can see that Venus right here, here's the symbol for Venus. Oh, we see the symbol for Capricorn. So we know that Venus as well starts off in Capricorn at the very first of January. Notice how how it's gray here. So the gray means that it's retrograde, and they'll have a little R to show you, right? Usually that R is here, but they, I think they wanted to put the Capricorn because it's, it's gray here. I think they wanted to just put the Capricorn there so you know the year starts off that way. Because if it's gray, anytime it's gray, it's retrograde. Um, so it's gray. And then there's that R, so they're letting you know, you know it's retrograde. It's re and it's all gray. It's all gray. And then we go, we see down here that it's not gray anymore, and there's a D. So Venus is now direct. So we know it starts off retrograde at 23 degrees Capricorn. And we know that on the 29th of January, it goes direct because it's no longer gray. And we see this 11, so we know it goes direct in 11 degrees Capricorn. So one thing I just want to mention is that, let's look at Mars right here. We see that Mars is in the sign Sagittarius. This is a simple Sagittarius. And there's no signs right here. That's because it will stay in Sagittarius and it doesn't show you the sign until it sh switches to another sign. And you see right here, that's Capricorn. So we know that it starts off in Sagittarius and we just know that it stays in Sagittarius. And we can track the degrees if we're interested in that. But we know right here, Mars, right here, that says Mars again. We know that the month... January 2022, the first, it starts off Mars 13 degrees Sagittarius. And we're looking at it, and it's just, it's cruising through the degrees. And, oh, look, there's another sign. What day is that? Is it the 25th? We know that on January 25th, Mars is going to go into Capricorn. And I know that you all like to know when Mercury goes retrograde. So let's see if Mercury goes retrograde. Well, it's, I don't even need to see. I can already tell because we can see right here that it's gray. 
So, and there's an R. So when is Mercury going to go retrograde? Well, we're looking at January, so we know it's going to be retrograde heat this month. And we're looking down and it's showing that Mercury went to Capricorn right here. And then it went into Aquarius and went through the degrees. And now it's gray and there's an R. So we go over here. And we see that it's the 14th. We go to the column. Oh, excuse me. I think I might have mixed up the north node with Mercury. Let me see right here. Oh, we are at the 14th, yes. So 14th right here, if we draw a line and we reach it to the Mercury column. That is, we can tell that Mercury will go retrograde on the 14th because here's the day the 14th of January and that's the sign it was in and it was it just it goes down it goes through Aquarius until it hits here it's still in Aquarius but it's now retrograde and we can see as it goes through the degrees retrograde we see another symbol right here for Capricorn so it goes back into Capricorn as it goes retrograde and it's it's great like here we see that it's gray and there's a D so we know that we start off the month with Venus because we're talking about Venus as retrograde and then the last three days it goes direct we can look that in the middle of the month or the 14th Mercury goes retrograde and it stays retrograde through the rest of the month so that's how you can tell like retrogrades and that's how you can tell what each planet is in it very easily shows you once you get used to it but you do need to know your symbols for a quick reference, like I said before. So that's how you read an ephemeris. It's lots of fun to be able to know what's going on in the sky. Um, when you're an astrologer, you end up with, with many pages of ephemerises. I'll just show you. There's from 2000 to 2050, like you just... It, they become very helpful references to look things up. So a whole book on ephemerises. And another one, just just books and books, tables. I mean, pages, pages and pages, tables. And I think I kind of wanted to share that they, that these calculations, right, and these calendars um, on these tables, Calculate from the solstice and equinox points. Now, some people like to do their measurements by what is known as a procession of the equinoxes or sidereal calculations, right? Like this, this right here is a tropical calculation of what the stars are doing. And again, that goes by measuring by the solstices and the equinoxes. However, some people like to measure by the procession of the equinoxes. That has to do with the shift in our earth that we've made and how the stars affect that. And I just thought it'd be nice to show you that they make whole books of ephemerises for that too. You see sidereal and this book is, is books of measurements on that as well. So they make both. If you're curious to look into what the stars are doing by tropical calculations or um, sidereal. And I hope that you understand that and that was informative. It's fun to know what the stars are doing in the skies and check it out. And um, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Bye.